Thank you for being with us today. We um, want to also welcome those who is watching this broadcast through the internet. We also want to say thank you for being with us this morning. Hallelujah. Today is a good day that the Lord has made. God is so good and we rejoice. We rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice because God is good. He is worthy to be praised. No matter what you're facing in your life, circumstances, situations in your life, know that God who is with you and in you will be able to do abundantly above more that we even think or imagine. Because God is faithful God. And when we call up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He is hearing us. And when we speak the word of God in faith, His word will not return void. His word will manifest in each of our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. God is a good God. He is faithful God. He is worthy to be praised. How many of us today, when you wake up in the morning, this is a good day. You are awake. And you are awake and you say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for this day today. I thank you, Lord God, for my family, right? This is what we do each morning. We say, God, thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my neighbors. You rejoice in the Lord. Because see, when we rejoice in the Lord, then we allow that the joy of the Lord come through us. It's in our hearts. It's in us. Because God is in us. And when we release this joy, hallelujah, joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. This is the, what the scripture says. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when we uh, when we rejoice in the Lord, right? So it's a choice. It's a choice. Hallelujah. Amen. So the godly character, godly character is also the part of our nature. Amen. Because the old man is dead. The old man is dead. Now, you are a new man. You are a new creature. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That all behaviors, that all nature is no longer part of you. You could activate that by doing this all behaviors. But you don't have to because you are a new creature. See, it's not just a, a newborn spirit. It's also to walk in the newness through the Lord Jesus Christ. In some of this newness, you have to activate and you have to learn. Because you learn of the new old behaviors and, you know, you learn from somewhere and from someone. Now you have to relearn and renew your mind, right? Because this is the part of the behaviors. You renew your mind with the word of God and the word of God that we have what? We have the joy. We have the peace. We have the love we walk by faith right so that that newness of mind so it has to be just not in the words it also has to be in our behaviors and how we do that and how we apply this to our life we asking our lord and savior jesus christ for the work of the holy spirit we say lord i thank you i thank you lord that i am a new creation in christ jesus I thank you, Lord God, that the peace of God, you are the Jehovah Shalom, you are God of peace. That you you have a kids, two or three kids at home, and they hollering, they screaming it, and you just, you just don't bother because you have a peace of God. You have the peace of God, and you release that peace of God into your children, into your family, into your animals, into your life, into everything that is around you. Shalom, peace. You're walking on a property. You're walking on some places. Shalom, peace of God walk with you. You can see the chaos around, but the peace of God walk. Because you are the master 
of your emotions, you are the master of your spirit, you release this peace of God. Shalom, peace. You're not yielding to the old nature of that dead nature because that is a dead nature. You're not yielding to that nature. You are walking in a newness, in a newness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is good. He gave us the power and ability to walk in a victory. You have some circumstances and you are, oh, you're just terrifying inside. But let the peace of God, let the peace of God just intervene. And, 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 and you, when you have that peace, nothing can shake you. Because you, when, also when you have a peace, you receive the understanding that God is here and, and, and he will lead you in that circumstances. He will lead you. He will help you to make uh, right choices, right decisions in Jesus' name. So let the peace of God, let the shalom today be in your heart. No matter what you will here, no matter what you will see for this week, this coming week, you let the shalom, peace of God be in your life, be in your mind, be in your family, be around you. Let the peace be around you in every, in every area in your life. Even if you're dealing with the finances in your life and situations, let the peace shalom, shalom. Let the shalom manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to open up in prayer. Pastor Larry is here. We're going to receive the word from heaven today. Amen. That's a spiritual food. We all need that spiritual food. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for who you are. And we give you all praise. And we give you all glory. You are God. And we are your people. We thank you, Lord God, that you here today with us we thank you father that you're present you are anointing so strong in this place today and we asking you lord god that you are touch your people those who is here right now and those who is watching this broadcast touch your people in jesus name we apply the blood of jesus over your people life and their minds and we thank you lord god that touch your people let not one who came today or those who is watching this broadcast will be the same. We, we thank you, Lord Jesus. And we give you all the praise. And we thank you, Lord God, that all of our lives will bring glory to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So just get ready. Today, as Pastor Larry will speak the word and ministering to us just get get ready to receive that spiritual food hallelujah amen amen in the power of a renewed mind. Walking in the power of a renewed mind. Amen. Uh, before we get started, though, I would like to, to thank all of you that are with us today, that are here in the sanctuary, and those that are with us by the internet as well. I know you could be at a lot of places looking at a lot of other people. Amen. 
watching the program from a lot of other people, but God has brought you to this channel, and I pray that that something is said that will cause you to be strengthened, to cause you to be encouraged, to cause you to, to excel in your spiritual walk with God. Amen. And I know that we all have one goal in common, and that is that we might know him. That we might know him. Amen. That's all of our goal. We all want to know him. We all want to walk in the press in his presence. We all want to know that his love is extended toward each of us. We all want that. Amen. So let's go ahead on and pray. Let's get started. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we glorify you now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And Father, without you, we can't do nothing. But we can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth us because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, your word is life and health and healing to all our flesh. And that's why, Father, as we come to recognize the power that we obtain with a renewed mind, Father, we will not hesitate to apply your word to our hearts because therein we will see your strength. We will experience your glory. We will, we will see the power of God manifesting on our behalf. And Father, we covenant with you now, Lord, that what you do in our midst, that we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty and majestic name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. You know, on Sunday morning, we were teaching along this line. There was one of, one of my people was sitting on the back row back there in the church here, sitting on the back row. Amen. The power of God came in this place and, and, and the anointing. I mean, he said, he said, Pastor, I got a testimony. He said, when I came into service this morning, he said, I was in a lot of pain. My back was hurting so bad. He said, Pastor, I didn't, I, I, I didn't feel like even coming to church today. Amen. But he said, but Pastor, when you said the anointing was being released in this place, it's just like the power of God came down upon my back. He said, it was just like a hot fire all over my back. He said, Pastor, I'm healed. Amen. I don't feel no pain. I don't have no pain at all. Amen. This was just on last Sunday morning. Amen. Being renewed and renewing of your mind by the word of God is a powerful thing. Folks, we have to understand that God wants to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think according to his power that worketh in us. And that's why it's so important that we come to, to the knowledge of God's word with a renewed mind and come expecting God to do what he said he would do. Remember, God said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Well, how are we going to know that if we don't understand the word? So we have to renew our mind in this area. Oh, what do you believe in God for? If it's finances, then you need to believe, you need to renew your mind to the word of God concerning finances. Or is it a, a relationship? Then you need to renew your mind on the area of relationship. Whatever that you have need of, God has a word for it. Amen. God has a word for it. Amen. And so what we what we are want to do today is just share with you, amen, and to encourage you to allow the word of God to renew you, amen, by you spending time in the word and in his presence, amen, in prayer and in his presence, amen. So I believe that this is going to literally change your life, amen, amen, amen. So Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer, to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you now, Lord God, that we're going to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. Amen and amen. There are some people right now, you, 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 you're struggling with addictions. Amen. You're struggling with addictions. And I see, I see some men right now, you're struggling with drug addiction. I see women also struggling with drug addiction. Amen. And I want you to know that your addiction, the addiction that you are experiencing, can, you can be free from it. You can be free from it 
by just simply trusting in the Lord your God and asking him to, to, to come into your heart. Amen. God can deliver you without you even having to go to a rehabilitation center. God can deliver you without you having to go through all the changes of withdrawals. God can set you free just like that. All you have to do is trust him. Amen. Trust him. Because I know what I'm talking about. Because you see, I wasn't safe all of my life either. I was in the world just like a lot of you are in the world. Amen. I had one church, I had one foot in the church and one foot and one foot in the world. Amen. And I know that I wasn't living right. I know that I, I was calling myself a child of God. I was calling myself a Christian, but I wasn't living right. Why? Because I still I was still dealing with pain deep within. I was still dealing with pain deep within. Amen. And so until I until I was completely healed of that pain, I studied, I had a struggle in my life. I struggled in a lot of things, a lot of errors in my life. Amen. But once I received my healing, once I received my healing, I was delivered by the Spirit of the Living God. Amen. And it didn't, and it didn't take but a minute, it didn't take but an instant. Amen. God delivered me. And I believe that God wants to deliver you also. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing, but I know what the word of God will do for you if you just allow God the opportunity. You've tried everything else. Why not give God the opportunity? Why not yield to his leading, yield to his spirit? Just, you know, what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose, amen, but everything to gain. God wants to show himself strong on your behalf. God wants to see you walking in the liberty of his word, amen. And how that's going to happen? It's going to happen when we realize that, Lord, I tried it many times in my own strength. I've tried it and I failed. I've miserably, I, I, I've been miserable all this time, Father. And now, Lord, I'm just tired of living this miserable life. Can you help me? If you are God, can you help me? And I'm going to tell you something. He is God. And yes, he can help you. He is God and he can help you. Glory to his name. Now, whether you want that help or not, it's totally up to you. But God can help you. Walking in the power of a renewed mind is walking in the spirit of the living God. Amen. Walking in the spirit of the living God. We are coming now to the to understand that God's purpose and God's plan for our life is a whole lot greater than what we imagine it to be. Because you see, once we begin to renew our mind, we begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. How do God see you? How does God see you? Amen. Are you having mental challenges? Amen. Is the enemy bombarding your mind with mental thoughts? Amen. Now, today is also communion day. So we want you to prepare your hearts also for communion after the service tonight. Amen. We want you to also prepare your heart for communion after the service tonight. Amen. And so we want, we, we, we're, we're going to just enjoy life today. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the life source. Amen. He is the life source. Amen. And when we come to him, we're going to see, we're going to know, we're going to understand that everything that he is, he has provided for us. Amen. He has provided for us. So I want you to prepare your hearts to receive today. Amen. And if you're watching us by the internet and you want to take communion with us this evening, this morning, or this afternoon, whatever may be on your part of the town. Amen. Get your elements ready for communion today. Amen. And we're going to have communion today. Amen. Glory to God. So now, so now let's go here and uh, and let's just go ahead. We, we're just getting started. So you're, all, you're right on time. Amen. We're just getting started. Amen. Glory to God. One thing that one thing I know we have we have to uh, come to when how we going how we going to uh, renew our mind. First of all, we got to come to the knowledge of what God has done and what God is doing. Amen. What God has done and what God is doing. Amen. How are we going to do that? We're going to come through that by uh, when we, as we begin to renew our mind, the spirit of this sermon will begin to uh, rest upon us. Amen. The spirit of this sermon. We need to understand what we are facing. We need to understand what we are going through. Amen. We need to understand that we are not alone. The renewing of your mind, if we are, if we're going to, uh, if we're going to be spiritually healthy, if we're going to be spiritually strong, if we're going to be spiritually uh, uh, prepared for this, 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 these last days, 
then we got to have a mindset that is stayed, that, that is meditated, that has been equipped with the word of God. Amen. With the word of God. Now, how how that's going to happen, folks? It's going to happen when we humble ourselves before his mighty hand. Amen. When we humble ourselves before his mighty hand. Because you see, to be to have a renewed mind, let's go to the book of Proverbs. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. And I want to share, share something with you. Proverbs chapter 1. In Proverbs chapter 1, amen, we're going to see what we're going to see a very, very powerful passage of scriptures that's going to focus us on how to renew our mind. Amen. Glory to God. See, this is a powerful word that will bring renewal to your mind if you would allow it to. But you got to open up your heart and you got to be willing to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Because God is not going to force anything on you. It's your decision. It is your choice. Look at Proverbs chapter 1 and look at verse number 1 said, The proverb of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to receive the words of understanding, to receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Amen. Verse number 4. To give subtlety to the simple, to young men, knowledge and distraction. Amen. So what that what did that reply to? In in order for this to be a part of us, then we have to. This is he's talking about renewing our mind. He's talking about coming to the knowledge of the word of God. He's talking about bringing yourself into understanding of what God is saying to us. Look at verse number five. It says, "A wise man will hear and will increase." learning. We'll increase learning. Amen. So how is that going to happen? That's going to happen when we begin to renew our mind. Amen. God wants us to see ourselves the way he is. He wants us to see ourselves the way he is. Amen. Because when we begin to see ourselves the way he is, we begin to see ourselves as he see us. As he see us. Amen. So one of the things that we need to understand is that God is a sovereign God. And God has a sovereign will that he has planned for our lives. Amen. God is a sovereign God. He has a sovereign will that he has planned for our lives. Notice what he said in verse number five again. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Increase learning. A man of, uh, a man of understanding and shall obtain and shall attend unto wise counsel. And shall attend to wise counsel. Amen. So when we are willing to hear, when we're willing to yield, when we're willing to uh, to to receive counsel, folks, that is start that is bring you to the place of of, of renewal. That calls you. That's going to cause you to, your mind to begin to think on a new level. Amen. Why? Because you've been renewed by the power of the word. Amen. God wants to bring you to a renewed mind. Glory to God. What's going to happen? Amen. What's going to happen is that is that of breaking the fear of limitations. Breaking, I'm going to say it like this, breaking, when, you, when we begin to allow our mind to be renewed, we're going to begin to break free of limitations. Amen. That restricts us from obtaining the promises of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. When we begin to renew our mind according to the word of God, we, it's going to break, we're going to be, we're going, it's going to break us free from limitations that restricts us from the will of God. Amen. Amen. So we see that when we begin to renew our mind, all those things that have limited us is going to become, is going to become a powerless over us. Amen. Because you know that God, God wants you to be free. God wants you to understand who you are. God wants you to know the will that he has prepared for you to walk in, in this earth. Amen. And so when we begin to renew our minds with the word of God, those limitations, those restrictions that's been placed on your life through generational of burials, God is going to begin to deliver you from those generational uh, restrictions, through those generational curses that's been placed upon you through your ancestors or by your ancestors. Amen. 
God is going to bring you to a place where you begin to experience supernatural liberty. For he that the Son set free is free indeed. Glory to God. Who the Son set free is free indeed. So you want to be free, you want to be free from those limitations? Then you have to understand that, that we serve a sovereign God. Amen. And the will of God always comes to pass without fail. The will of God will, all, will always come to pass without fail. That's why it's so important that we renew our mind. Because if we don't renew our mind, how will we know his will? Remember, folks, God's will is his word, and God's word is his will. Amen? And so if we understand God's word, then we'll understand God's will. So how are we going to understand God's word? By understanding God's will. How are we going to do that? By renewing our mind with the word of God. Amen? By renewing our mind with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, number two is that there, uh, there is a, a, a revealed will of God. There's a revealed will of God. Amen. That when we when we come to understand, as we come to understand his purpose and his plan for our life, do not allow the, the enemy to steal or to take that which God has prepared for you to walk in. Because the thief is out to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. By removing, now, now, now notice this. Now notice this. Notice this. Because it's so important that we understand what I'm about to say right now. Amen. By renewing our mind with the word of God, we are removing. The same thing as you believe in God for healing. You believe in God for deliverance. You believe in God for whatever. Amen. And by renewing your mind with the word of God. You are coming into a, a, a new status in your, in your, in your uh, spiritual understanding. Because as you begin to renew your mind, it's going to begin to remove those restrictions. Amen. Because you're going to see that the word is going to begin to bring you to an understanding of what God is saying to you. Amen. And that only happens when we renew our mind with the word of God. Amen. When we begin to renew our mind with the word of God, God is going to bring us to that place of inner peace and inner healing. And folks, when we, when we begin to experience that, the restrictions that have been placed on our lives, hallelujah, they're going to be removed. They're going to be removed. And he that the son set free is free indeed. There's no more bondage in that person's life. Why? Because he yielded himself to the will of God by understanding what God has purpose and plan for his life by studying and allowing the word of God to transform him. Remember what God, what word God said in Romans chapter in Romans chapter 12, glory to God, in verse number 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed, that's right, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if I'm going to be renewed in my mind, then I, 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 it's going to, if, I'm not going to be transformed to this world. What happens if I'm being transformed to this world? I am being limited to be transformed to the to way this world is going. I'm going to be limited to what I can do Amen. in this earth as a child of God. Amen. Amen. Because... If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be conformed to this world, then it's going, to, it's not going to allow me to to experience God's best. Amen. Why? Because I'm more focused on the things around me instead of the things that are not seen. The things that are not seen are eternal, but the things which are seen are temporal. So if I'm going to experience the renew the renewness of my mind, then I'm going to walk in that knowledge. Amen. Of who he is. Because the Bible said in 1 John 4, 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Talking about them that are in the world. He said, and greater is he that is in you or in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Glory to God. Now, folks, that give us that give us something. That give us some room right there. That give us something to talk about. That give us something to shout about. Amen. God is already made everything available for us, and all we have to do is understand what God has done and begin to allow it to bring break forth in our lives. Everything that God has planned for us is available right now. So, what happened when I begin to renew my when I begin to renew my mind? What happened when I begin to renew my mind? I'm going to unlock. When I begin to renew my mind, listen to this. I'm going to begin to unlock Amen. the wisdom of God. Woo, glory to God. When I begin to renew my mind, I'm going to be, that's going to, that's going to cause the scriptures to be unlocked. <clears throat> that the wisdom and the knowledge of the word of God we begin to be revealed to my heart. How that's going to happen? When I begin to renew my mind, this will begin to unlock the hidden mysteries of God's word. Amen. But if I don't renew my mind, those 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 mysteries, those those hidden secrets that is that is that is buried inside of the word of God is going to re, it's going to remain a secret. Amen. It's going to re, remain hidden to me. But if I begin to renew my mind, I'm going to begin to cause those, those, those nuggets of wisdom, those golden nuggets of knowledge that's going to cause me to excel in the things of God. Those golden nuggets is going to be, oh, glory to God, it's going to be revealed because the word is going to cause it to happen because I'm unlocking my mind with the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm unlocking my mind with the word of God. So if you are experiencing a setback in your life, it be, may be because your mind is locked up, amen, and you can't see yourself beyond where you where you were when that thing, when your mind was locked up. See, the enemy, he want to do everything he can to restrict you. He want to do everything he can to keep you from advancing. So what did, what did he do? He caused you to be more focused on the things that are around you than the things that are going to cause you to be free. Amen? Because as, as when you begin to focus on the word of God, he that the son set free is free indeed. Amen? Is free indeed. Amen? Now I'm going to show you something else here because you see, you need to know this. You need to understand this. You need to know this and understand it. I want, I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, the book of Ephesians chapter 4, amen, God wants to unlock the hidden secrets of his word to your heart, and he wants to do it today, he wants to do it today, now, I can't make you open up your heart and allow God to do what he wants to do, it's your decision, amen, it's your decision, but notice what he said right here in Ephesians chapter 4, and let's just start reading with verse number 20. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 20. He said, But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, verse number 22, that ye put off, notice what he said, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Which is corrupted, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Amen. Verse number 23. And ye renew and be renewed. I like this part right here. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Hallelujah. See what it see what God is saying? Amen. 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 Look at verse. Look, let's, just, let's just read it again. Amen. Verse number 22. He said. Verse number 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is renewed, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust. Verse number 23, and be renewed. My God, that's powerful. That's powerful. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Look at verse number 23, 24 now. And that ye put on the new what? Man. 
the new man. The new man, which is after, which after God is created in what? True righteousness and true holiness. Glory to God. You see, God said to us, he said to be ye what? Holy, for I am holy. Amen. So if I'm going to renew my mind to the word of God, I'm going to begin to see myself the way God see me. I'm going to begin to see myself holy. I'm going to begin to see myself worthy. I'm going to begin to see myself <coughs> walking in the power of his word. Amen. How that's going to happen? By the renewing of my mind. Amen. Because God said it is acceptable in his sight. Notice what it said in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. He said, brother, he said, Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, he said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Notice what it said, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Then it said, and be not conformed to what? Be not conformed to this world. Because if I'm conformed to this world, I'm restricted. I'm, I'm, I'm walking in restriction. I've been limited to what I can accomplish or what I can do. So if I'm going to, if I'm going <clears> to, <throat> if I'm going to not be conformed to this world, then I must be renewed in the renewing of my mind. Amen. I have to be renewed in the renewing of my mind. And what's going to happen? What's going to happen? The restrictions is going to be broken. Amen. The limitations is going to be removed. And I'm going to be able to understand the will of God for my life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Amen. Because you see, if, if, I can't, if I can't understand what God is wanting me to do, then I will never be free from the restrictions that the enemy has been trying to place upon me. Amen. I will remain in bondage. Amen. Amen. But if I'm going, if those, if, if those restrictions are going to be removed, if they're going to be broken and I'm going to walk free from them, then I, I must begin to understand I must renew my mind. Amen. I must renew my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. In other words, a transformation must take place in my mind. I must be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Isn't that what it says in, 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 in verse number 2 in Romans chapter 12? Amen. But today I want to focus, I want you to focus, I want you to see this because you see, God wants you to be renewed by renewing your mind. Why do God want you to be renewed by the renewing of your mind? Because you see, God wants the restrictions to be broken off of your life. And some of you, you, God want the restriction to be broken off your ministries. Amen. 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 God want the restriction to be broken off of your ministry, uh, off your off your family, Amen. Off of your finances, off of your health, Amen. Amen. So if I'm going to be, if I'm going to walk free of the restrictions, then I must renew my mind to the area that I'm focusing on. Amen. Amen. I must be, I must be renew my mind to the area that I'm focusing on. So if I'm believing God for healing then I must be renewed in my mind concerning the word of God on healing. And how am I going to be renewed in that area? I'm going to be renewed in that area by meditating upon the word of God in that area. I'm going to write down every scripture pertaining to that area, and I'm going to begin to meditate upon it. What's going to happen? I'm going to be renewed in the renewing of my mind. The spirit of my mind is going to be renewed. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And the restrictions that the enemy has placed upon me, what is the restriction? The spirit of doubt, the Amen. fear, and unbelief. Those restrictions that the devil has brought upon you by the spirit of doubt, the spirit of unbelief, and the spirit of, of fear, these things are going to be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. Glory to God. And those restrictions that's been placed upon you is going to be, is going to be they, they, they won't be able to hold you. When we know the God we when we know the will of God, we will live in the power to overcome the restrictions that the enemy plays upon. Because when we know the will of God, we are walking 
we, we, we come to understand that we've been given the power Amen. to walk free of the limitations. Amen. Amen. The restrictions and the limitations will be removed because revelation knowledge is being revealed to our hearts through the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, friend, now that's a powerful, that's a powerful tool. Amen. Now, know what it said in the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua. Amen. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1. And Joshua is right after Deuteronomy. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Notice what it said right here, verse number 7 and 8. Is it, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written, according to all which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse number eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Notice what he said, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What is meditation going to do? Meditation is going to cause the word of God to begin to go, uh, go from your carnal mental thinking of faculties and become, and they're going to drop right into your spirit. Once that word drop into your spirit, it's going to become alive. That word come alive once it hits your spirit, and all of a sudden, illumination begin to take place. And now, what the restriction that's been hold, that's been that have held you back, God is revealing to you supernatural wisdom, supernatural knowledge is beginning to spring forth. And now, the you know what it's going to take for you to walk free, Amen. And all you got to do is act upon what God is revealing to your heart, what God is bringing to your understanding. When you act upon it, you're going to be set free. He that the Son set free is free indeed. So he says, verse number 8, that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Good success. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Amen. And so we must have a transformation to take place. We are perfectly useless if we are conformed to this world. We are useless to God if we're being conformed to this world. But if you want to become worthy of the will of God to be unfolded in your life, you want to become worthy, you want to feel, you want to see yourself uh, excelling in the things of God, then allow the transformation to begin to take place in your heart. Amen. How that's going to happen? Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8 tells us how it's going to happen. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt do what? Meditate therein day and night. Day and night. In other words, if we begin to allow the word of God to be meditated upon and up by reading and by, by studying, amen, and by observing, then we're going to come to the place where supernatural wisdom and knowledge is going to be revealed to our hearts. And what's that going to do? That's going to cause a breaking away Amen. from traditions. Amen. That's going to cause a breaking away from restrictions. Amen. That's going to cause a breaking away from limitations. Amen. Those things that have held you back, those things that have kept you from advancing, amen, you're going to be free you're going, to be, you're going to see yourself walking free. And you're going to see yourself walking in the power of a renewed mind. You're going to see yourself walking in the power of a renewed mind. Amen. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. 
that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's the only way you're going to be able to discern the will of God for your life is by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Amen. That word is used one time in all the gospel, namely about Jesus on the Mount Transfiguration. Amen. Jesus was transformed on Mount Transfiguration. Amen. He was transfigured. Amen. And when he came out of that transformation, he came out. I'm not, and I'm telling you, it was, a, it was such a, a, an ordeal that, that Peter, James, and John, the, those that was up on the Mount Transfiguration with him, they were so uh, dumbstruck, they were so confounded that, that Peter said, Lord, shall we build here for you a tabernacle, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elias? Why did they say that? Because they didn't know what else to say. They didn't know what else to say. So they came to understand that the transformation had took place. They saw the transformation that was taking place, and they wanted to understand what were they, what was expected of them to do. Amen. They wanted to, they wanted to experience, they wanted to bring the transformation. They wanted to build tabernacles so they can see what God was doing. Amen. That's that's that that, that, that was a that was a good suggestion, but was it God's will? No, it wasn't God's will. He, God was transforming him. God showed him that God was showing them that in order for them to, in order for him to complete his journey to, to accomplish the task that God has given him, that transformation, the renewing, the renewing of the mind by the Spirit had to take place. Amen. That's why I like what it says in Ephesians chapter four. Amen. Ephesians chapter four. Amen. I like what it says. There, because he said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In the spirit of your mind. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. And so now, so now this uh, didn't include, didn't include it, but uh, glory to God. But you can, you can avoid, all, you can avoid all kind of, all, all kind of things when you begin to renew your mind. It's because the devil, he can't hold you, he can't control you when you start renewing your mind. Because your mind is going to be your mind is going to come under the scrutinized presence of the Word of God and the will of God is going to be manifest in your life. In, in, Matthew, in Matthew chapter 13, he said, Then the righteous shall shine like the, like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Amen. What, how is that going to happen? When the light when, when, the, when the light begins to shine forth in the kingdom of his Father, that means you begin to walk in that transformation. Let's look at 13, Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Amen. Matthew 13. And look at uh, here, let's see, verse number 13, verse number 43. Verse number 43. Amen. Glory to God. And it says here, Matthew 13, verse 43. It says, Then shall the then shall the righteousness shine, then shall the righteousness shine forth. As the sun in the kingdom of their father, who had ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. So when we when we understand, when we see that, that means that breakthrough is coming. Why? Because of the renewed mind that is taking place because of the word of God. Amen. The renewed mind that is taking place because of the word of God. Hallelujah. Can you can y'all understand that? Amen. 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 See, something, something like that happens when uh, something like that happens when, 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 we go, when we start yielding more to the Spirit. Uh, we begin to experience God's supernatural Amen. abilities causing our mental faculties to become aware of of his divine will and his knowledge. In other words, our wisdom and knowledge of God's word going to begin to unlock as we begin to renew our mind with the word of God. You ever start, you ever start meditating upon something then all of a sudden you know exactly what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Amen. What happened? 
you, you was meditating upon something. You asked God a question. God, how can this be? How can I do this? Then you start meditating on the word concerning that. And what happened? God supernaturally revealed to you knowledge that you'd be able to carry out that which on your heart, that what he had placed upon your heart to carry out. Amen. What happened? He unlocked the word of wisdom. He unlocked the word of knowledge. You discern by the spirit exactly what to do. That happened because you renewed your mind concerning that issue or concerning that area. Amen. If you renew your mind, because I'm telling you, when I was hurting, when I was sick, when I was in a lot of pain, I didn't have no idea how I was going to be here. I didn't have no money to have no insurance. I didn't even, if I went to the doctor, I wouldn't know how I was going to pay the bill. And so I'm lying in my bed crying like a baby. And God said, get up and read your Bible. And I got up and I started reading that Bible. And when I got to this certain passage of scripture in Mark chapter 16, amen, all of a sudden the scripture started jumping off the page, started jumping off the page. Amen. And, I, and, and, and the more I read it, the more it jumped. And the more it jumped, the more I read it. And then all of a sudden, I got an understanding of what God was saying to me. What happened? I meditated upon the word. I allowed the word of God to minister to my heart. And it revealed to me God's will and God's purpose for my life. Amen. How did it happen? By the renewing of my mind concerning my situation. By renewing my mind concerning my situation. And then I walked in the power of of that word. I walk in the power of that word. Amen. How did I do it? By the renewed mind. By the renewed mind. Glory to God. So transformation is not switching from one to it's not switching from one to do less. Amen. But it's called but it caused you to switch from one way of walking. Because if you being conformed to this world, you still Limited to what you can accomplish. But if you tired of the limitations, if you tired of being restricted, then you want to walk in the power of a renewed mind, then you need to take actions. Because no one is going no one can do it for you. This is something you gotta do, Morel. Something you gotta do. Take control of your action by writing the scriptures down pertaining to the area that you're concerned about. Amen? Amen. And read them over and over and let them begin to minister to your spirit. Amen. Once they begin to minister to your spirit, all of us, and, 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 and as you meditate upon them, God is going to unlock the wisdom to that area that you're believing for. And he's going to point you in the right direction. And he's going to tell you, and you're going to know exactly what to do. Amen. You're going to know exactly what to do. Amen. Because he wants you to understand what to do. Amen. He wants you to understand what to do. So when, when Paul replaced those words of fear, those words of doubt, when he began to renew his mind, he, he caused those words of fear, those words of doubt, the words of unbelief, that, that, that negative conversation that negative communication, he causes to be pushed out, to be forced out. Amen? Because now, that he, as he begins to renew his mind, he's thinking on those things which are good, things which are pure, things which are lovely, things which are of good report. He said, should there be any virtue, should there be any praise, you shall think on these things. And what's going to happen? By thinking on these things, by thinking along this line, your whole line of communication is going to change. It's going to change. Why? Because you've been renewing your mind with the word of God in this area. And now the word of God is beginning to unlock for you and remove those hidden, those hidden restrictions that have been placed upon your life. Those restrictions, those limitations that the enemy has caused to, to be a part of your mindset. All of a sudden, because you've been renewing your mind, those limitations those restrictions, it's going to be removed. And it's going to unlock your understanding to the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter, Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter 5, and I want to look here at verse number 19. Amen. No, 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 no. Verse, let's, let's start reading verse number 16. Galatians chapter 5, and let's start reading verse number 16. Amen. And it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, for the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Amen? Now, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, and variance, and elimination, witchcraft, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I as have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such. There is no law. See, this is what's going to be revealed to your heart as you begin to renew your mind. These things that's going to cause you to be strengthened, they're going to cause you to understand that you, as a child of God, can walk in the power of a renewed mind. Amen? And not be restricted in your walk. The freedom of being enslaved to these things will come. Glory to God. When you begin to understand that you belongs to him. But like, but you said drunkenness. Drunkenness. Everything that's, everything that's against the will of God. But like, why did Jesus make wine though? I was just curious. We'll talk about that later. Okay. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I, we, we have a, an obligation to come to the place of seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Amen. We come to the place of seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Amen. And so when we see ourselves the way God sees us, then we can see that in Roman chapter, in Roman chapter 8, amen, this is why this is why Christian's life through uh, thought is a uh, let me just go there. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 8, I want you to look at verse number 7 first. Romans chapter 8, verse number 7. And it says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. See, if we don't renew our mind, our mind is going to work against us. Because our carnal mind is enmity against God. Amen? So, if I'm not walking with a spiritual mind, that means my mind is being conformed to this word. But if I'm walking... In the spiritual mind, I'm, I'm walking in line with the will of God. Notice what he said, verse number 7 again, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither thee can be. Neither thee can be. So now, if I'm going to walk in a renewed mind, if my mindset is going to be, uh, if I'm going to have the mindset that Christ will have me to walk in, then I'm going to have to see myself walking and, you know, being, com com being transformed by renewing my mind. I've got to see myself being transformed by renewing my mind. Amen. And then in, in, in uh Koshe Kila La Basandre, And then Romans chapter 10, verse number 3. Romans chapter 10, verse number 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness 
and going about to establish their own righteousness, not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God. Amen. And so we have to we have to see ourselves the way God sees us, because you see, we will become enslaved to whom we serve. Amen. We're going to become enslaved to whom we serve. Look at uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse number. Romans chapter 6 and look at verse number 18. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 18 it says. Being, being then made free from sin, ye become the slaves of righteousness, the servants of righteousness. The servants of righteousness. Amen. How many of you want to be servants of righteousness? Amen. 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 And, look, and, and look at verse number 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. Notice what he said? You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Everlasting life. So when we come to understand that to be to walk in the freedom of a renewed mind, to walk in the power of a renewed mind, we're going we're gonna to become more like him. We're going to become more like him. We're going to become transformed to walk in his image and after his likeness. We're going to walk in his image and after his likeness. Amen. And then and we find out that if we walk in his image and after his likeness, you find out that there's no sickness in him. There's no, there's no sickness in him. Glory to God. And now notice that <clears throat> since we're in chapter six, look with me over in uh look at with me in chapter in verse number three. In Romans chapter 6, verse number 3. He said, Know ye not that so many as of so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Amen. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in in newness. Notice what it said, in newness of life. Okay, how that's going to happen? How that's going to happen? When we begin to renew our mind with the word of God, we begin to walk in the newness of life. The power of the renewed mind will cause you to walk in the presence of God like you never walked before. Amen. Glory to God. And you can see yourself Walking in change. Amen. You can see yourself walking in God's presence. Amen. Where the power of God has been made available or become real to you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you've been conformed to this world, then sin still have a stronghold on you. And that will cause you to be that will cause you to be restricted in what you can accomplish for the kingdom of God. And you might be a Christian. You could be you could you could, you could walk around every day, but if you still if you still, but if there's sin in your life, then you you walk in restriction. You're not able to accomplish the thing that God wants you to do because You've been limited because of the because of the, the because of that because of that that sin. And that's why we have to see ourselves walking free. As my wife said the other day, buried. Let that old man die, and 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 you have a, a, a eulogy for that old man. Bury that old man. Let him die. Yeah. Give him a funeral. <laughs> Amen. Well, what are you talking about, that old man? Well, Galatians in, in Colossians chapter two and verse six said, Paul said, "I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live; yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yes. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by what? I live by the faith yes. of the Son of God, who loved me, who gave Himself for me. Amen. In other words, my life is no longer mine. No. 
is no longer mine. I've been bought with a price. Yeah. And now I got to lay down this old life. Yes. Hallelujah. Have to lay down this old life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And, I, and it brings us right back to what Paul said in Romans chapter 12. He said, the, and Paul know, and, and see, because he, he wants us to focus on it. Because you see, this is going to be our turning point. We got to be transformed, folks, by renewing of our mind. Amen. That we may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. We got to be transformed. There's no way around it. Amen. If you, if you long to break loose from your limitations, amen, and from the restrictions, then you must be transformed. Amen. You must be transformed with the word of God. Amen. If you long to see the transformation take place within you, amen, then you got to remove yourself from areas that will contaminate you, that will cause you to be less than what God created you to be. Amen. Glory to God. God wants to bring you to a place of when you say, when you come to a, a people and they say, and, 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 and they said, well, I go to church. Was that, was that, then they said, well, are you a Christian? Then you said, yes, I'm a Christian. And then they would say, well, prove it. <laughs> How can you prove that you're a Christian? You, it, it, it's, it's, it's not something that you, it, it's, it's your lifestyle that's going to prove that you're a Christian. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's your lifestyle that you're going, that's going to prove that you're a Christian. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then if they're in, and then and then one one other way that you're gonna prove that you're a Christian by walking in what? Love. In love. Amen. By yeah. walking in love. Right. Amen. Amen. By walking in love. Mm -hmm. right. Glory to God. Because when the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart, it will cover a multitude of sin. It will cover a multitude of sin. The problem with our minds is that we want to, we, we have been so educated that we, uh, we want to outthink God. We want to outthink God because we have been so educated. <laughs> I know you got questions, but let me tell you something. So many, and you might say, I've been to college too, and I know those professors. And I know when they when when they know that you're a Christian, they're gonna to try to undermine who you are. No, but that's not true because in my English class, I actually proved my professor wrong when he. Yeah, you might can prove him wrong, <laughs> but they still not gonna prove. They still not gonna stop him from trying to undermine those that he that can't prove him wrong. Right. Not everyone can prove him wrong. They don't have the knowledge to prove him wrong, so he's gonna to continue to undermine them. And cause them to be less than what God created them to be. That's why we have to renew our mind with the word of God. So that no one can, can, can change our, 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 our mindset. But it, even though we're, we're learning, we can, we, can, we can learn, we can study. And we're still going to realize who we, we're still going to know who we are as children of God. That won't be altered. I guess like my point was that just like we're not at the mercy of other people. We're not. That's what my point was. Yeah. We're not at the mercy of other people, but at the same time, we got to realize we got to know who we are. Amen. That's why you come to God. Yeah, we got to know who we are. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this today? So it's like saying, like, professors, it doesn't matter because we're not at the mercy of them. Bosses, it doesn't matter. Anybody could attack you. It doesn't have to be professors. It but doesn't have to be professors. It doesn't have to be boss. They can be your best friend. They yeah, can still attack you. Exactly. That's why you got to be close with God. Yeah. You got to walk with God regardless of who you're around. Exactly. Go to college. Go do your thing. But just be close with God and nothing bad will happen. That's right. That's right. You got it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared of anyone. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. I've enjoyed sharing this message with you today. Don't turn that off yet. Yeah, we got, we're going we're gonna to have communion now. Amen. So I want you to turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, it's time for communion. Those of you that are with us by the internet, you want to take communion with us, go ahead on and get your stuff ready, get your uh, crackers ready, your juice ready, amen, and we're going to prepare for communion right now. Glory to God. And I appreciate all you that, 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 are, that are here today, 
Amen. And those of you that are going to be having communion with us on the internet. Amen. This is very, very important. This is one of the ordinances that God commanded us to keep. And so we do it wittily and gracefully. The Bible says in glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Go ahead and pass out the elements while we're doing this, while I'm reading this. Go ahead and pass them out while I'm reading. Okay, I appreciate that. And when he has given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. No one eat until we all eat together. We all eat together. No one eating separate. Okay? Amen. Verse number 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye and often that ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often that ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body, of the blood, of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Let us examine our hearts right now. I want you to just close your eyes. Those of you that take communion with us, close your eyes right now. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to show us if there's anything that is will interfere with us taking communion. Let us repent of it right now. Let us examine our hearts right now. If there's anything that will restrict you from, that will hinder you from retaking this communion, right now, let's make it right with God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now I'm going to lead us all into a prayer of repentance just in case you are not able to focus and to get your heart clear. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sin. Forgive me, Lord. I receive your forgiveness now. Father, today, I believe that my heart is right with you and within my own heart I receive your forgiveness. Amen. Shh. Glory to God. That was powerful. Thank you, Father. 
Hallelujah. Amen. This is a piece of cracker, which is also a representation of the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus took upon his back 39 stripes. And every stripe that he took upon his back, when his body was broken open, it was for you and it was for me. For the healing of our bodies. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, the Bible says, we are healed. As you partake of this portion of the element today, release your faith with me for your miracle healing power to be released. The miracle healing power of God to be released as you partake of this portion of the element. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing right now and I declare this is holy unto you. Now Father as we partake of this portion of the communion let us receive our healing now in Jesus name. Let us receive our healing. Let us eat together. Thank you Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That you bore our sicknesses and you carried our diseases. And you sent your word. And you healed them and delivered them from their destruction. We receive it now, Father. And we declare that we are healed. And that we are walking in divine health. Thank you for it, Father. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was shed for our redemption that we may be able to stand before a holy God as without sin. And as we partake of this, remember that your sins, though they may be many, when we ask God to forgive us, our sins were forgiven. And we receive forgiveness of our sin that as we partake of this communion, we will partake of this communion as children of the Most High God as without sin. Let us partake. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows and with his stripes we are healed. You are all in right standing with Almighty God right now. You don't need a bull or goat to sacrifice all you need is believe and trust that God has already worked it out through the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's go to prepare for our offering for today. Amen. Glory to his name. For this I say, he which sowed sparingly shall also reap sparingly, 
And he which sowed bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he had dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministered seed to the soul, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. And increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which cause it through thanksgiving to God. Father, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of our sin. Father, and as we purpose in our heart to give our tithes and our offerings, Father, we give willingly and we give cheerfully, Lord God, because, God, you love a cheerful giver. One that is able to do it. God, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to that power that worketh in us. So, Father, I bless you. And, Father, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. And, God, I give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing in our lives right now. Father, we give you praise. Go ahead and receive the offering. Hallelujah. It's already there. Hold it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this tithe. We thank you for this offering. We bless this offering, Father. And for those that are still giving, Lord God, over the internet, we ask you, Father, that you would Move supernaturally upon their hearts. So let them give according to you purpose, according as they purpose in their hearts. Father, let them give wittily and cheerfully. I bless them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare bonuses, raises, settlement, supernatural financial increase back into their lives because of their willingness to give today. God, I give you praise and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You never made Jesus Christ love your life right now. I'm going to give you that opportunity. Amen. And I know those of you who ripped us right here in the sanctuary. Amen. I know that you have repented. You have asked God to forgive your sin. Amen. But right now, I'm going to ask you one more thing. If you want to rededicate your life to the Lord right now, or maybe someone is listening to me right now, you never made Jesus Christ love your life. You want to ask him to come into your heart right now. Amen. I'm going to ask you right now to make that decision. Say this prayer with me. Those of you that are going to make that decision today, say this prayer with me. Amen. And I know that God will bring it to pass. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sin. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. That's a simple prayer. But if you said it from your heart, Jesus Christ has come into your heart. And your sins are forgiven. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you right now in Jesus' name. Those of you that have special prayer requests, I'll pray for you right now. Come on, sisters, let me pray for you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my sister. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continues to rest upon her. I thank you, Father, for divine health and healing. As she continues to walk, Father, that you will continue to keep her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Come on.
Don't be scared. No, I'm not. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my sister. I thank you, Father, for divine health and healing. I thank you, Father, that every joint of her body is functioning properly. I thank you, Father, that every nerve, every disc, every vertebrae, brother, is functioning properly. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against her prosperous, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that she's walking in divine health and healing. I thank you, Father, that every Father, every mindset is being regulated by the Spirit yes. of the living God. I thank you for it right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I declare, Father, divine health. I declare, Father, divine healing. And everything, Father, that the enemy has due to try to undermine her, Father, that God, you're going to cause it to be moved in Jesus' name. And Father, I bless my sister, and I thank you for her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Divine health. Divine health. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it, Father. God, we praise you. We worship you. We glorify you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father, what the enemy that's coming against her mind, what the enemy that's coming against her mind, I rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. I cancel every argument in the spiritual realm right now over her. I cancel it in the spiritual realm right now in Jesus' name. And I apply the blood of Christ from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it, Father. And Father, we consider that's done. We consider that's done now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' Lord, name. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 Glory, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Glory to God. You. Now, Father, we pray for those that are with us by the thank internet you. right now. Hallelujah. And, Father, we ask you that you would move supernaturally upon their hearts. Hallelujah. And, Father, touch right now by the power of your spirit. Hallelujah. I give you glory. I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for my family that's in Chicago right now, Father. I speak blessings over them. I thank you, Father, that your hand rests upon them. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against them will prosper, Lord God. And, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that everything that the enemy has meant for evil, Father, that you'll turn around for your glory. I bless all those under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you all. We thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for you, all you that, is, that are with us. Amen. God bless you. Until this evening, be blessed. We'll see you again this evening. Bye-bye.